Yes, uh, good morning everybody. Welcome to the session of uh, Transportation Engineering. Today we will be seeing this topic, uh, Traffic Study, uh, what important role it plays in uh, designing of the pavement. As uh, we already know, the different uh, roads have been segregated as expressways and national highways and state highways and different uh, roads again uh, related to the urban areas. So basically, traffic study it plays a very important role in designing the pavement. Uh, because uh, depending on the number of counts we'll have to see, uh, we'll be designing the payment. Let us see what all uh, things are related to this. As you can see, what is traffic study? Uh, traffic study is a study carried out for to obtain the knowledge of the type and volume of the traffic at present and to estimate for the traffic that the road is expect expected to carry. So basically you can see here the type and volume, different types also has to be seen here. Uh, because uh, some roads they cater to some specific uh, type of traffic and some roads uh, cater to mixed traffic also. So we'll have to design, we'll have to see what type of traffic uh, uh, is this road uh, catering to. If there is mixed traffic or there are some heavy vehicles which are only uh, crossing over that, you must have seen in, uh, at some places uh, uh, signs are being placed so that uh, uh, two wheelers can't uh, use uh, that lane so the same way we will have to see what type of traffic is there and what is the volume of traffic uh, traffic uh, is expected in the future as well so this is what traffic study is and uh, to determine the facilities provided on the road such as traffic regulation and control intersection so that improvement on the basis of traffic density may be carried we also need to know what are the different uh, facilities provided on that stretch uh, what are the different uh, how many intersections are being provided and what is the uh, basic control uh, points are they being provided or not so all these things come under traffic study because uh, we just can't uh, look at the traffic study uh, only only it can't be uh, specific only to the traffic count we'll, uh, we'll also need to see what are the different intersections intersections also needed different places you must have seen uh, one when one within a one stretch you must have seen sometimes that different localities connect to each other at those places we need to provide intersections also and sometimes if it is a highway we also need to provide uh, some by lanes also for heavy vehicles to uh, move to the by lane and take rest for some time so all these uh, things come under traffic study so it is very important uh, what type of road uh, road it is and what uh, facilities are being provided on that road and how many types of intersections are being provided so all these things come under traffic study you can also see to design the geometric features and pavement thickness on the basis of traffic service as i had told you depending on the volume of the traffic and the type of traffic we'll have to see the thickness of the pavement also so it, it provides uh, uh, the basic knowledge for design of the pavement and geometric features also as uh, we also see what uh, uh, is the vertical alignment as well as what is the horizontal alignment to be provided and as per the need we have we'll have to provide the super elevation as well as transition curves also so all these things uh, depend on the traffic study so this is the basic uh, initial thing where uh, uh, which is needed for design of a pavement if uh, this uh, this traffic study uh, has uh, is being done properly so it uh, it will lead to a very proper uh, design of pavement here so let us see it, it is also used to design of bridges and culverts uh, we also need this proper traffic study for designing of bridges also if we have uh, very heavy uh, vehicles where uh, as we have different types of uh, vehicle loading type a tracked vehicle is there then we'll have to depending on the load uh, and the volume coming over there we'll have to design the pavement thickness also and sometimes even culverts are being provided so we need to have a very proper study of the traffic which is uh, uh, which is moving on that stretch survey related to accidents helps in redesigning of the roads increasing road width and to maintain regulation control so proper survey is also needed so that we can uh, reduce the accident uh, rates also sometimes it happens when we don't provide when we provide some sudden curves at those places and if no proper super elevation is being provided what happens is centrifugal force is generated and that has to be reduced if that is not reduced properly or no measure is being done to reduce that centrifugal force then that leads to over overturning of the vehicle and, and, and as well as skidding also and that leads to accident 
so we need to carry very proper traffic studies so that a proper uh, pavement is being provided with all the uh, with all the measures needed to avoid accidents also so traffic study plays a very important role in designing of the pavements uh, proper pavements as you can see if that if this study is not done properly and uh, all the things related to it are not done properly then uh, they might uh, lead to big consequences of uh, loss to life also uh, let us see what is traffic flow uh, this is what is traffic flow so basically we are seeing under traffic study what all comes the first thing is what is traffic flow see the counting of number of vehicles on a road flow we'll have to count what type of vehicles are coming on a pro on a road uh, on on a particular stretch uh, of road flow see we have two wheelers as we have as well as we have three wheelers also and four wheelers also and we have heavy vehicles also and and Again, we have class A vehicles and class B vehicles also, wheeled vehicles as well as tracked vehicles also. So all of them have to be differentiated separately or they have to be mentioned separately. We just can't club all of them because uh, all these vehicles, they perform in a different manner. So we have to specifically mention on that stretch what are the different types of vehicles. You can see after getting all those vehicles, we'll have to see the total number of count. Uh, basically we see peak hour count also peak uh, because uh, peak hour count also leads to proper designing of the payment you can see flow is defined as the number of vehicles that pass a point on a highway or a given lane or direction of a highway during the specific time interval so basically what is done is we go either we go for 24 hour count or a, or a weekly count also but basically in that 24 hour, hour count we uh, the uh, uh, the main concern is what is the peak hour time peak hour time that plays a very important role you must have seen at some places you must have come across some uh, uh, bottlenecks also where the traffic gets jammed so at that peak hour time we should come up from we should come up with some measure where this traffic can be reduced basically if you when we see the uh, 24 hour count from morning to evening uh, every hour we see a count uh, you can uh, specifically go for single hour count also and that count we can see which is which is the peak hour traffic time so after getting that peak hour traffic time we can go we can go for we can design a very proper pavement which can reduce this uh, congestion also the, me the measurement is carried out by counting the number of vehicles nt number of vehicles is nt passing a particular point in one lane and defined period uh, defined period t so in this particular time t what are the number of vehicles passing over that stretch there are counted specifically uh, counted the, this is done manually as well as the, it can be done with uh, mechanical uh, resources also but uh, either of them is used depending on the need then the flow q expressed in vehicle it is the you can see here the flow is expressed in vehicles per hour and it is given by q is equal to nt by t nt as i i have told you it is number of vehicles and t is the time so basically in the, that proper in that specific time what is the flow of the vehicles is calculated here you can see what is the traffic volume the variation of volume with time uh, that is from month to month day to day r to r and within r is also an important uh, as volume calculation as i had told you depending on the need we see from one month to the other month what is the traffic volume and sometimes day to day also 24 hour also and sometimes we calculate this within one hour also we segregate uh, uh, this traffic within an hour also peak once we come uh, once we are uh, we get the peak hour traffic time then we segregate it more into some minutes also so that specifically within this time what is the count on this stretch because so we need to be very specific with the uh, traffic volume count volume variations can also be observed from season to season you can see in different season there are variations in volume uh, uh, traffic volume also it is there in uh, uh, summer season during the uh, uh, afternoon time the traffic volume is not uh, that much uh, uh, it is more at the uh, start of the day and at the end of the day that is in the morning and evening also so depending on the season also the traffic volume also changes so volume will be above average in a pleasant uh, uh, morning month of summer as i have told you the volume will be more in the in the month of summer and the morning period and it will be more in the evening period also whereas you can uh, you must have seen in the afternoon time the traffic volume is not that much so depending on the season also the traffic volume is calculated uh, it, it is calculated from day to day month to month as, and as well and uh, hour to hour also depending on the situation or the need as we come across it will be more pronounced in rural than in urban area so in urban area 
that is uh, we have to go for very specific uh, traffic count uh, rather than in uh, rural area in rural areas you don't find that number of vehicles but still that uh, the class uh, type of vehicles change in rural rural areas depending uh, when considered to urban area we don't uh, come uh, in urban areas we don't come across uh, much of uh, traffic related to heavier vehicles uh, in a residential area areas or commercial areas whereas in uh, rural areas we come across tractors also and different heavy vehicles also so even this have to be has to be differentiated uh, specifically you can see different traffic studies now how is the different traffic studies uh, we have traffic volume study we have again speed studies also we have spot speed study also we have speed and delay study also Daily studies are also done, origin and destination studies also done. So all these are the different types of uh, studies related to traffic. Uh, uh, as per the need, we uh, do uh, we uh, we plan that type of study. You can see classified volume count. It is the most common highway design classified volume count. As uh, I have told you, it is very important. Uh, we need to, uh, on a highway design when we uh, design an expressway or a national highway. So we specifically need to know what type of vehicles are uh, maximum, uh, which are traveling from one point to the other point. Yeah, though there are some. Uh, domestic vehicles also but some most of them are commercial vehicles so we need to specifically uh, count the commercial vehicle that uh, uh, that are traveling from one point to the other point uh, on the highways so it is the most common highway design volume or flow is expressed in vehicles per hour or vehicles per day so number of vehicles they can be expressed uh, within an hour as well as within a day also uh, in India, the survey is, is to convert the mixed traffic into passenger car unit. So, as you know, we come up, we uh, mostly we have mixed traffic. Uh, so, we convert it into passenger car unit. Now, you might be uh, thinking, what is passenger car unit? See, a passenger car unit is a measure used primarily to assess highway capacity. Different vehicles are assigned different PC values. Like uh, a car is assigned as a number one PC value, as a, as a, uh, higher vehicles or heavier vehicles, they are being assigned with a, a higher amount, a higher higher number. You can see. So basically, uh, with those numbers, we can specifically come across if uh, if a number one has been assigned, it means the number of cars on this highway are this much. If number five is assigned, that is the heavier vehicle. So the, uh, with the number, we we can uh, get the exact value of the vehicles uh, traveling on that highway. Okay, the so peak hour traffic, as I had told you, even peak hour traffic count is done to get the correct assessment of that road and uh, uh, so that uh, uh, so that there is no congestion of the vehicles uh, during the peak hour, which can lead to uh, traffic jams at other points also. So peak hour traffic is needed for the design of intersections. See, if intersections are provided, that peak hour traffic can be uh, distributed uh, uh, systematically. So the peak hour traffic is needed for design of intersections, whereas for whereas for the determining the number of lanes in the carriage way, the daily traffic is needed. So peak hour traffic is very important for design of intersections, and um, uh, and the daily traffic is needed for design of number of lanes in the carriage way. As if we get a daily traffic, we can uh, say, uh, we can calculate how many number of lanes are needed depending on that daily traffic. And uh, peak hour traffic is uh, is essential or helpful in designing the intersections. You can see. So the traffic counts are taken by uh, are taken by noting the number of vehicles of various classes that passes the count point in each direction during periodic time intervals. So basically, the whole day is being divided within an hour, and each uh, manually we note down from one junction to the other junction. Uh, we specifically note down the types of vehicle crossing that junction. So within a day, uh, we we exactly get the count. Uh, depending on that count, we can uh, design a way, we can properly design the pavement. You can see traffic census is taken regularly on NH network, that is National Highway Network, twice a year for seven consecutive days in each round. So for seven consecutive days, we see uh, yearly twice we do this on the national highway. Uh, though, uh, though it has been designed and future also is predicted and designed uh, accordingly, but still we do uh, within a year two times we do this uh, count for seven days consecutively. So one round covers peak season and the other lean season. 
So how do we uh, differentiate it and, or how do we divide it is in the first round we see during the peak season what is the traffic count and, uh, and the other is uh, done during the lean season. So basically depending on this then we can uh, properly design a highway. The average of 7 days traffic is average daily traffic. Yes, uh, once we get the total uh, uh, count of traffic of 7 days, so average daily traffic can be known very easily. The total count can be divided by 7 and we get average daily traffic. If the traffic is taken continuously for all the days in a year, the average traffic is known as AADD, DT annual average daily traffic. You can see here if the traffic is taken continuously for all the days that is 365 days in a year the average traffic is known as annual average daily traffic annual average daily traffic even this is done uh, sometimes and uh, basically these counts are done using a mechanical device because manually it is not possible uh, uh, as the season change and there might be monsoon season also where uh, manually it, it will not be possible. In that situation we go for a mechanical, we use a mechanical device so that the proper count can be taken. And that to that mechanical device what it does it, it records everything, a video recording is done and from that video recording again uh, uh, that is segregated, these traffic is segregated accordingly. You can see here types of volume measurements. Uh, average annual daily traffic as I have told you the average 24 hour traffic volume at a given location over a full 365 day year so this is done every day for the whole year for 365 days that is the total number of vehicles passing the site in a year divided by 365 once we get the total count we just divide it by 365 so we can get the average amount of vehicle passing that specific area within a day so this is done for the whole year. This is called as average annual daily traffic. You can see here average annual weekday traffic, weekday. Specifically this is done on weekdays only. The average 24 hour traffic volume occurring on weekdays over a full year. So this is done for a full year but th that is done only on weekdays. This count is done only on weekdays. Uh, average annual daily traffic that was done for the whole year for 365 days and average annual weekday traffic this is done only for weekdays for a whole year. It is computed by dividing the total weekday traffic volume for the year by 260. So this it is depending on the number of weeks for 260. Average daily traffic ADD and average 24 hour traffic volume at a given location for some period of time less than a year for not for the whole year but for less than a year that is done. Uh, it may be measured for six months a season a month a week or little as two days. So it is uh, average daily traffic uh, uh, is uh, different it can be done for six months as well as for a season for a specific season it can be done for a monsoon season or it can be done for a winter season or it can be done for a month also or for a week or as less as, uh, as less as at least for two days also it can be done and average daily traffic is valid uh, number only for the period over which it was measured so it is validated only for the specific uh, time which it has been fixed average weekday traffic and average 24 hour traffic volume occurring on the weekdays for some period for time less than one year such as for a month or a season as i have told you this this uh, count is done only on the weekdays and it can be done either for a year or less than a year or sometimes for a specific uh, season also depending on so this uh, these are the different types of uh, volume measurements as per the need uh, we go for that type of volume measurement you can see here the traffic volume study how the traffic volume study is done now now how are these calculated how are these counts how do we count them so this are you can see here the traffic volume is the number of vehicles crossing a section of road per unit time at any selected period so uh, at any selected we basically we select a, a destination and an origin and we see the number of vehicles passing over it uh, per unit time the commonly used units are vehicles per day and vehicles per hour. So as per our need, if we are uh, seeing in per day how, how many vehicles are moving, that will be calculated vehicles per day and for per hour and that is calculated in a specific hour. The various methods available are, as I had told you, we have manual method also where uh, people are placed at an intersection or origin point and all these uh, vehicles are uh, noted two wheelers or three wheelers are noted specifically. They are differentiated, different columns are made and they are marked specifically. Uh, we have sometimes as per the need we have combination of manual and mechanical methods also where we have we want a count of the whole year 365 days which is not possible uh, because of the different seasons which we come across we have monsoon seasons also and we have uh, heavy summer seasons also at that times manual calculation is not possible 
uh, under that situation we also use mechanical devices also mechanical methods also you can see third is the automatic devices uh, where we don't need any manual uh, recording uh, automatic devices are placed and uh, depending on this that automatic devices we get the data from that data we specifically segregate these vehicles you can see moving observer method even this is there moving observer method is basically a, a camera is placed on a vehicle and we move over that area and the camera records that whole uh, uh, whole uh, uh, number of vehicles which pass from the origin and destination and after getting that uh, uh, video we uh, then we segregate that traffic volume we have photographic methods also uh, depending on the situation sometimes we can't uh, place some manual uh, devices also that in those conditions we go for photographic methods also at some places where it is a mountainous area we can't place uh, uh, and this and the uh, seasons are different and the climate is very uh, different and it keeps changing in those conditions we go for photographic methods also um, you can see manual counts how is the manual count done this method employs a field team to record traffic volume on the prescribed record sheet so basically we prepare a record sheet in which uh, uh, different vehicles are uh, mentioned specifically and at the at the intersection where the team stands there they record each and every uh, vehicle which passes that point in this method first the fluctuations of traffic volume during the hours of the day and the daily variations are observed so depending on the specific hours the whole day has been divided in hours and in each hour what is the number of uh, vehicles passing that point is calculated and each day also they can be uh, 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 summation of those uh, can be done of those uh, specific hours can be done and we can get the daily account uh, of the traffic on that area but uh, in this uh, there are some disadvantages also and some advantages also you can just you can see the advantage it gives class classification of vehicles and turning moments also some vehicle they even turn at some moments also mechanical devices can't record these things completely because a 360 degree turn is uh, needed because the vehicles can turn anyway uh, any side so this advantage is there in manual recording but disadvantage is it cannot work throughout day and night day and night it is not possible in night also manual count is not uh, possible at nights also as i had mentioned annual average daily traffic for the whole year is when it is counted we need to see for 24 hour uh, day but if, with manual count it is not possible so combination of manual and mechanical methods it is multiple pen recorders pen recorders are placed at different uh, uh, points where we want to see the count of traffic a chart moves continuously at the speed of a clock it moves continuously different pens record the occurrence of different events on the chart so these pens they uh, automatically record the different events which are crossing that point and that comes onto the chart a particular switch may be pressed whenever a particular class of vehicles arrives and this operates the pen on the channel which can be identified uh, with the arrival of particular class of vehicle so you can just press the pen and it records that type of vehicle which you have mentioned there or which you have feed it there uh, so this can be done using this uh, pen recorders also the advantage is the classification and vehicle count are performed uh, simultaneously you can see uh, uh, the count is also done and uh, specifically the uh, classification is also done uh, simultaneously uh, so uh, less of uh, manpower is needed here but uh, the disadvantage is it does not give turning movement of the vehicle as i have told you manually we can see what are the turning movements also but it is not possible with this mechanical devices because a 360 degree turn is needed once if the mechanical device turns at one place the other uh, place is not recorded so manually uh, uh, it is uh, this this advantage is there in mechanical devices you can see we have speed studies also spot speed uh, spot speed is the in instantaneous speed of a vehicle at a specified section or location we need to know the speed uh, of the vehicles also which are traveling on that stretch of road it is very important because if we get the correct speed studies this can uh, lower the accident rates also uh, you can see methods of measuring spot speeds we have long base methods and short base, base methods also so we have these different methods where we can uh, get the exact spot speed 
Now you can see this is uh, using the device uh, spot speed by endoscope. It is one of the simplest methods of uh, finding spot speed. The, it is a, its principle is the observer is stationed on one side of the road and starts a stopwatch when a vehicle crosses that station. That is the observer. So it is very simple. Uh, we mark two points. We uh, mark the start point and the end point. We just uh, click the, uh, on the endoscope and the start of the time is uh, time is started and once the vehicle crosses the destination we just uh, stop the watch and we get the spot speed within that uh, stretch the inoscope is uh, placed at a convenient distance say about 30 meters to 50 meters uh, that is placed at a different uh, uh, about at least at a distance of 30 meters the moment when the vehicle crosses the section where endoscope is fixed the stop watch is stopped so as i had told you the origin and destination is being marked once the vehicle crosses the origin it is uh, start to watch is uh, clicked and once it crosses the destination it is stopped so we can uh, within that uh, specific uh, distance we can get uh, what is the uh, speed uh, time required to cross the known length is found and is converted to speed in kilometers per hour once we get the, the time, we can calculate the speed also. Uh, so this is the speed studies and this is done using this uh, mechanical instrument. You can see here, this is the picture where you can see this is the observer point is being uh, fixed here and the endoscope is uh, being placed at, uh, uh, at least 30 meters from the observer. And once the vehicle crosses, uh, we just click uh, the stopwatch and we can uh, get the start time as well as once it crosses the inoscope we can get the uh, stop time also once we get this time we can uh, calculate the speed also so this is how you can see origin and destination studies uh, the uh, origin and destination studies of vehicular traffic determines their number their origin and destination in each zone under study the various applications of uh, ond study that is origin and destination studies may be summed up as follows. Now, what are the different uh, applications of this origin and destination studies? It is carried out for assessing the by uh, uh, possible traffic at towns and for planning new facilities like expressway. Once origin, origin and destination points are being fixed, we can see what is, what is the amount of traffic uh, entering into the town and what is the amount of traffic that is uh, leaving the town. Uh, so that specific, uh, that amount, when, once we get that count, we can uh, properly uh, design an expressway and sometimes depending on the need we can also uh, increase the expressways also. It is done by many methods by registration number matching, roadside interview and postcard uh, questionnaires also. Now these studies can be done by different method that is registration number matching. We uh, note down the registration number also entering into that town and we also see the uh, when this registration number is uh, moving out of the town. So this can be done in this way also. Roadside interviews are, is also done. Uh, you can see here. Uh, you can see that the, in the residential area, uh, one vehicle is entering. Uh, so where is it uh, moving towards uh, some residential area or, uh, or some religious area or some commercial area also, also or it is going towards some uh, government sector also. So we can specifically get where is this vehicle uh, moving towards. Uh, it, it might be in that particular area we have uh, different uh, uh, the different uh, areas uh, for need of the people but which area is specifically used we can get that count and once we get that count that pavement can be designed accordingly so that uh, that road is used maximum so that can be designed accordingly so it is very important we uh, we need to know what is the origin and destination study also. You can see here, uh, uh, it is helpful to locate expressway or major routes along the desired lines also. As I have told you, uh, some of the lanes are used mostly depending on the activity of the road. Like if there is some uh, commercial area in that road, those roads are used more than residential roads also. So depending on that, we have to design a pavement properly. We have to maintain that pavement properly also. So it is uh, very helpful in locating the expressway or to judge the adequacy of parking facilities and to plan for future. So even depending on this count, we can also know what is the parking facility needed at, in those areas. Uh, if we have just set up a, some commercial uh, uh, area, but uh, there are no parking facilities provided in that area, this, this might lead to congestion and this might lead to delay of uh, uh, time which, uh, which will uh, indirectly uh, delay the de development also of that area. 
so to locate intermediate stops of public transport uh, public transport uh, can be uh, planned accordingly if uh, where can these stops be provided uh, depending on the need of that area uh, you can see it is also essential in establishing uh, preferential routes for various categories of vehicles including bypass so bypass routes also can be uh, provided uh, to avoid con congestion on those uh, areas so it is very important we need to have a very good study of the vehicles entering or some specific area and leaving that area you can see now that the methods for collecting the ond data origin destination data what are the different methods we have a roadside interview method we have license plate method we have return postcard method we have tag on car method and the choice of the method is made uh, judicially depending on the objective and location so we have this these different methods and uh, depending on our need we can uh, select any type of method uh, so that uh, we get the correct traffic count you can see roadside interview method what is roadside interview method the vehicles are stopped at uh, previously decided interview stations by a group of persons and the answers to prescribed uh, questionnaire are collected on the spot so vehicles are stopped at some places and some questionnaire is given to them and uh, basically they are asked uh, from where they are coming and where they are going the uh, origin of their uh, uh, travel to the destination of the travel and some other questionnaires are also prepared so that we can get this count also the information collected include the place and type of origin place as well as time of origin when where are we starting the our journey and when are we starting the journey and the destination the route which is the route we are using location of stoppages where all do we stop so that uh, uh, proper parking facilities should be provided in those areas also the purpose of the trip type of vehicle and number of passengers in each vehicle note you can just imagine how specific data we are trying to collect here in the roadside interview method purpose of the trip also whether it is uh, uh, for the purpose of some commercial activity or religious activity and type of vehicle whether there are more number of two wheelers or four wheelers or uh, more number of uh, domestic vehicles or commercial vehicles and the number of persons also traveling so this is very important roadside interview method is done in this way you can see license plate method the entire area under study is cordoned out and the observers are simultaneously stationed at all points of entry and exit on all the routes leading to and out of the area so that whole area is being cordoned and the entry and exit points the observers are placed so that the number of uh, vehicles entering that area is counted and the number of vehicles moving out of that area is also counted so each party at the observation station is uh, given synchronized time pieces and they note the license plate number so the license plate numbers are noted here so that that specific license uh, that uh, plate numbers are moving out of that area can be known. Uh, license plate numbers of the vehicle entering and leaving the cordoned area and the time so specific when is that vehicle entering uh, that specific area the time is also noted and when is when is it leaving uh, that time is also specifically noted here so this is called as license plate method you can see uh, the points here mentioned uh, you can see the number the destination point is the uh, first point and where is these vehicles moving from point one to point two or from point one to point three or four this has been marked for this specific area this is how you can see uh, the blue line at uh, marks the number of vehicles which are less than uh, uh, zero and the vehicles green has been marked with number of vehicles which are less than 100 so at those specific uh, points see if uh, number two is uh, given as uh, some religious uh, place it has been marked as some religious place you can see the vehicles uh, going at that area is less than 100 if you can see the red uh, uh, red line mark that is if you can uh, just think if this is then commercial area so these number of vehicles are moving from destination one to three so that uh, once we get this count specific count of that uh, uh, area uh, where these vehicles are moving from one point to another the, the depending on this specific count uh, that type of payment can be uh, properly designed so it is very important uh, in the uh, determining these counts also so greater than four uh, we have count greater than uh, uh, four, uh, four, 40 thousand also and less than 400 also depending on that count we can properly design the payment so these were the different types of uh, counts and these were the different types of methods for counts if we uh, do these counts properly uh, then it is uh, it uh, get, get, uh, we get a very good data which is very helpful in uh, properly designing the payment and as well as uh, maintenance of the payment also hope uh, this session was uh, very uh, 
uh, informative to you. I request all of you all to please go through, go through this session and uh, please uh, comment. Uh, you can ask me questions in the comment box. I will try to answer to you. Thanks a lot for this session. I request all of you all to please uh, go through the session and. Uh,